Hey, hey, hey. What is going on, guys? What's going on? Welcome back to another episode of One on One with Courtney Starks. Um, I'm just thankful. I'm thankful to be here. I'm thankful to be back. Um, for those of you guys who tuned in the last... Um, the other day, I appreciate you. I thank you guys so much for supporting uh, the last one. So today's guest is Ben Lewis. He, most of you guys know him. He's real well renowned. Um, he does a lot within the community. He started off in a small little, small little box at Radio Free Brooklyn, Radio Free Brooklyn, and now he works for Sirius XM. I'm just now waiting for him to come on so we can get this show started. But how are you doing? Um, I'm hoping and I'm praying all is well. Actually, let me, I guess, add him in. Hold on. Y'all. Oh, there he goes. Never mind. Let's go, guys. Yo, my man, what's up? What's up? That's a fro. Yes. Yeah, man. Up, hey, come on. I'm, I'm in between getting my hair done and stuff, so you know, gotta. I had to wash it and, and and all that. Uh, so, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you gotta get it ready <laughs> and get it. I'm not even mad, my friend. Like I said, thank you for yeah for your sure patience, man. Like Wednesday, and one thing about me is I like to prepare myself and get myself ready. I go through like this whole. Hi guys, I go through this whole, you know, thing for me. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Um, yeah, so I go through this whole thing for me. And literally as I'm sitting on my couch getting ready, the power goes out. And I'm like, this is <laughs> a damn shame. This this is not happening to me right now. Yeah. Um but I thank you for understanding, bro, because I'm like, yeah, don't come back on. We'll give it a we'll give it a moment. Nine hours later. Yeah, guy. Yo, yeah. that's yeah, I'm sorry to hear that, man. What was it that, hot? Cause it's, it's, bro, hot oh wasn't my even God. The yo, I, I went outside <laughs> and I was like, yo, I could sleep out here. Like this is <laughs> this is in the rain and everything. Like, God, you yo. know, listen, I ain't afraid of no water. That's how bad it got. Like I and I sat here. And I started singing hymns, and I was like, I got to get through this. You were slipping, man. You were slipping away. That, that's yeah, I, was, <laughs> I was like, I was here, man. I was, I sound, was there. You this sound is the, like gate me. To the, the gate to the heavens, and I was literally right there, bro, like right here. You sound like <laughs> me last summer when, when Con Ed was was shutting down power in certain neighborhoods. Yes. It was like 98 degrees. Son. Came home, no power. Oh, my I didn't God. Even, I didn't even sleep that night. I think I just passed out for a few hours, man. Insane. Insane. Yeah. Well, so. thank you for thank you for joining us today, um, God. This is a special one because I don't do on Saturdays, but it is what it is. So this is my man. This is Ben Lewis, everybody. So let everybody know for those who are new to the Ben Lewis experience, let them know a little bit about who you are. Yo, your God, Ben Lewis. You know, um, radio personality, a content creator. Um, I just been I've been in this game for about three and a half years now. Like Courtney said a little bit in the intro, I started at a, a small community radio station and I was able to kind of work that process, get everything I possibly could out of it and till I, till I landed at a major station in Sirius XM. So uh, that's that's pretty much it, man. I just continue to strive to continue to come up with great content to put out yeah. um, and produce and bring to the world because that's really what it's about, man. Yeah, so... You know, I always say this to you, and I'm always, and every time I see you, I'm going to say this. So, God, yeah. we went to high school together, and I say this to him every time. I never heard him speak like, you know, like this <laughs> until I got to go to this to the um, Radio Free Brooklyn show, and I was like, wait, wait, yeah. where did this come from? You know, and one thing he told me was, you know, if you got something special to say or something important that you're going to say. Don't do it for free. And I was hey, like, oh, okay. Hey, hey, don't, don't give your opinion for free, man. <laughs> My man. So how, were you always interested in, in this field or was it something like 
that just came to you along the road? Um, it was something that uh, I was interested in for a long time. Like, since I was a little kid, I could remember uh, my sister, my older sister tells me, like, she was the first one to put me on radio because we used to have this little recorder in the crib and she used to, like, make a little fake radio show. And, like, that's where, like, the, the bug was kind of planted. And yeah. I also grew up in a family with five other siblings and one, and one TV. So... You know the older siblings. I'm I'm the third, so the the older siblings they they get to they get to say of what's what we get to watch. So a lot of times mm -hmm. I was just listening to Hot 97, listening to the radio, and just kind of like envisioning myself in those positions, talking to artists, introducing yeah. songs, all that kind of stuff. And I just kind of went away from it because like that's not really something that anyone around me knew about or knew how to get into, and it's not something that was really like tangible so to speak it's not the doctor it's not the lawyer it's not the right. engineer it's not that kind of stuff so it's like no one really kind of pushes you and encourages you to get into that mm -hmm. so i kind of stepped away from it um but the whole time like i'm working different jobs like the, the itch is there the call the, the bug is there i'm just like yeah, right. Right. how should i do this when should i do it and then you know i finally just decided to to make that leap mm -hmm. so i know you were telling me um a while back that you got fired from a job mm -hmm. and that's when you decided to kind of make that that leap over yeah so i, I was i was working a, a job it was, a, it was a corporate job like i went to after like i went to college um i studied marketing at first switched to computer tech uh, information um got my degree in that and then i was kind of working in that field but like i hated it like i did mm -hmm. not like it i couldn't even like get out of bed sometimes in the morning to, to go like that's how bad it was and I was just like yo I need I like I, I knew radio is what I wanted to do so while I was still at the job I started a podcast with one of my friends and I was like okay I'm gonna I'm gonna do this podcast I'm gonna use the money I'm making from the job because it was a really good salary I'm gonna use that money mm -hmm. to invest into the podcast and kind of like just do that do both until the podcast is monetizing and then kind of leave the job from there. Right. A month a month into doing the podcast, the company gets bought out by a bigger company and yeah. they're like, all right, we're gonna let everybody go. Oh so my I, God. Right. So I was just like, okay, um, I guess I'm gonna be all in with this with this right. podcast now. <laughs> Cause I was just like, yo, I, I didn't wanna go back to doing the same like thing full time because I knew mm -hmm. how much I didn't like it. Yeah. So I was just like, all right, I'm going to go all in with this podcast. Um, they gave us a little bit of something to walk away with. So I was able to kind of live off of that for a little bit. Uh -huh. But I was doing the podcast. A couple months into doing the podcast, I was just like, yo, I want to do live radio. Right. Like, that's really right. what I want to do. The podcast yeah. is cool, but live radio is what I want to do. It's where it's at. Like, and I, yeah. I agree. I definitely agree. You know, and I, I like what you said about this kind of like, for, for me, even in your story, I think about just how. Um, sometimes God puts these predicaments on you so that way you can move. You yeah. know, like who would have thought we, uh, you would be here had you decided to stay there because it's convenient, you know? So yeah. like that, sh that shake up, you know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't have been that, here. You're right, you wouldn't because <laughs> you would still be working at this job, you know? Right. Um, so then you start doing this podcast for a bit and then you say, I want to do live radio. So that's when you went into Radio Free Brooklyn? Oh, well, no, it did, like, I decided I wanted to do live radio, so I had to, like, do research, because I didn't go to school for communications. Mm -hmm. At that point, I ended up going back to school and got my degree in communications, but um, I didn't have a communications degree at that point, so I had to, like, pretty much find places to volunteer. So, like, I would, like, spend most of my days, instead of, like, job hunting, I was looking for places, yeah. radio stations that would let me volunteer, and I hit up, like, everybody i'm i was sending cold emails i was calling people i was <laughs> like creeping on on people's instagram like i was doing everything to get in the door mm -hmm. and finally like radio free brooklyn was one of the stations i hit up and they hit me back they were the only ones at that time that hit me back and oh, they were wow. like we're, we're having a meeting you know for volunteers and whatnot come through i went to the meeting and i've been rocking out with them ever since. And this was back in uh, 2017. 
So oh, uh, wow. back, yeah, back, yeah, back in 2017, that's when I got with Radio from Brooklyn. And I was like, when I tell you I was doing everything they, they needed, like, <laughs> you need someone to, to work the door at this event, I got you. You need someone to <laughs> come and clean up the studio, I got yes. you. You need someone to just that's what it is. help you set up microphones before your show, I got you. You need someone to yes. fill in for you on your show, I got you. Yes. And I was doing that for like six months. And mm -hmm. like the somebody just randomly left like in the middle of like the they just randomly left a slot opened up and the director Tom he called me and was like yo a slot opened up and we talked about it in the manager meeting at, last night and you were the consensus like name that came up for you for you to fill it out so then I had like two days to come up with the name of a show a concept and everything like that for, before I went on air he called me on a Friday and I was going to start the show that Monday Oh my God. Yeah. But talking about that's like showing up and being consistent. And see, yep. people automatically assume that you just walk into these positions. No, you don't. Like, no, you got to open doors and get your hands dirty and, yep. and do that background work to, um, to show yourself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That, at the end of the day, that's what it, that's what's going to get you in the door. You know, mm -hmm. Your perception and what people perceive. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. all of that kind of gets you in. So then you get in, and then you you name your show obviously Ben Talks. Yeah, it was it was the best thing I could come up with in two days. So <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was nothing to it. I was just like, uh, I need something quick. Like mind you, <laughs> mind you, I I got in there. I got in there. I started with them. Uh, it was the summer, so it was like June. I started with them, and they weren't allowing um, shows. They weren't allowing new shows until. Uh, like, I think, like, the next, like, March or something like that. Right. So I was just like, yo, I got time to come up with a name and a concept. Because I was just mm -hmm. like, when, I'm going to just keep volunteering and, and keep, you know, showing up for different things until March. And then I'm going to give them my show proposal. Right. And I'm going to get in because I've been here this whole time grinding and putting in work. And it was just like, there's your timing and there's God's timing, right? Facts. So... <laughs> I was like, yeah, I got time. I'm not going to think of a name. I, I ain't going to sweat it. And then I got hit like June, July. No, it wasn't even six months. It was like two and a half, actually. It was like two and a half because like I was there June, July, and then I got the show like the end of August. Okay. Yeah, okay. so I, I got the show at the end of August. So I'm here like procrastinating on thinking of what I'm going to name my show and what I'm going to do. Yes, and God is like, let's go. Yeah, what are you doing? exactly. I gave you the opportunity. <laughs> right. And even after I got the show, I was still doing everything else that I was, right. that I was doing before. Because, like, it, to me, it wasn't just about the show. Like, I legit loved being a part of that station. I loved helping out. I loved helping other people put on great shows. So, like, I was still very much, like, a part of the, like, community and a part of, like, the volunteer staff, you know, even though like I had mm. become a host at that point. Right. Right. And you see, and a lot of people who are, and people who are watching right now, and I, I think I always try to explain this in everything that I do. Um, it's not about the money. You know what I'm saying? It's right. not always about the money. It's about just getting your foot in the door. It's about giving it your all and being consistent a hundred percent of the time. Yeah. Period. Like, and then you know, it will show up, and it will show up for itself. Like your your body and work speaks for itself. So then you get this show, you get the show, and what is the first thing you wanted to talk about? Like, because now you got to set this whole thing up. You don't got much time to do it. So yeah. what did you say to yourself? This is what we're going to discuss. Um, I think like most people that um start a podcast or get to do like any type of show. Um, you are inspired by kind of, for me, it was um, Hot 97's morning show and, of course, The Breakfast Club. Like, those are the two iconic shows in the culture. Mm -hmm. When I got the show at first, it was in the morning. So I was just like, okay, I'm going to incorporate music and I'm going to talk about, like, things that are going on in society, things that are going on in, in black culture and, and, and music culture. So that was, like, the easiest thing um, after a while. You know, as I got more comfortable, I kind of branched out and started, like, covering different topics. And that's when I yeah. started coming up with these different, like, panel discussions and, and these different, like, specialty episodes. 
to talk about like certain things that I felt weren't talked about as much mm-hmm. in in the culture or needed a little bit more attention on it. Yeah. So you know that's the the show kind of evolved over time, but the basis of it was always to give artists a platform to like play their music and just come up and tell their stories. I've done countless amount mm-hmm. of interviews uh, and really just talk about like what was going on. And I yeah. use it for therapy too sometimes. Like sometimes I brought my own life onto the air and talked about what I was going going through. Cause that's what, that, I don't care what no one says, that's what gets, gets it at the end of the day, your transparency, yep. you know what I mean? If you can't, if you can't be you on your show, then what's the purpose? You know what I'm saying? Right, um, exactly. So you talked a lot about you talked a lot about voluntary, right? Mm-hmm. When was the point where they were like, "Listen, we want to bring you on board and actually pay you for what you're doing"? Um, that would that didn't come until like maybe a year in, mm-hmm. maybe a year and some change in. Um, I was conti- I I kept volunteering, kept showing up regardless of like, and and there were like one off like opportunities here and there where they would pay, mm-hmm. but you know. I just, like, regardless of those opportunities, I was showing up. I was there. I was, like, right. always there. Like, my goal when I got there was, like, I'm going to be, like, the face and the voice of the station. Like, that was that was my goal. So that's, mm-hmm. that's the, the kind of, like, the grind that I put into it. So about a year and some change in, um, they hit me up and was like, yo, we want to bring you on to the management board. Um, and, that like, I happily accepted and yeah. that's when really like I was like, okay, my like I really got my footing in there and um I was also like running like the uh, like people rent the studio for podcasts. Uh-huh. That's really where we got like most of the revenue is just like right. renting out the studio for podcasts. So like just every time someone needed to do a podcast, no matter what time it was, for the most part, I was the one that was there. Like it didn't matter mm-hmm. if I was out partying until two, three in the morning, it had to be there yes. at seven o'clock, like yes. I was there. Yes. And you yeah. see and I ask, I'm asking you all of these things, and I'm, I'm hoping people who are listening are taking notes or whatever. I'm asking this to you because a lot of people think that success is overnight. You know what no, I mean? No, and like you're going right. to get it tomorrow. You're going to get it within a week. And when you don't, you want to give up. I'm, I, I, the reason why I'm happy you said what you said was because, you know, you know, you said God's timing is not our timing. And a lot of times you have to get yourself, get your hands dirty, get your feet wet, get in there and do the work no matter how long it takes for you right. to, to get to the next step. And the fact that you had to wait a year to join the actual team of things, um, this shows your dedication and your purpose for what you wanted to do, right? So then yeah. you stay with them, you stay with this, this team for now three, 20, 20, about three years. Um, yeah. And then you receive, I guess, the job of one of your dreams, and that was Sirius XM. So how did this happen? Because when I found out, I was like, I thought it was me. That's how excited I was for you. So how did it <laughs> Yeah, happen? I appreciate that. Oh, man. Um, and even that wasn't like, I was applying. And, and there, you know what? There were certain things that, like, within myself, too. Like, even though I was, like, serving and, and volunteering and doing all this stuff, um, like, there were a lot of things that I felt like I had to get over within myself to get to a mm-hmm. point to get to that point because like i mean you might have had this experience too in doing what you do like after about a year you're like yo i'm ready for the big time like yo it's my opportunity right. and like yes. you, and for me i started to get like disgruntled a little bit like watching like other people because mm-hmm. you know you see other people's wins like on social media and stuff and you're like yo like damn like they getting this they getting that like where's my turn like i'm out here doing it whatever so like yeah. when i was in that like space and, and having that kind of energy about me like because i'd went on countless job interviews to different radio stations mm-hmm. like i i'd been on like a few and it would just be like the interview and no call back or the interview a second interview and then i didn't get it or like i like it took a while you know what i'm saying yeah. like it, t- it took a while and finally um i get a random email from sirius i like I'm, I mean, I'm sure I applied, but I don't remember doing it because you know how it is when you're looking for a job. You just apply. Of course, you just go. Right, you just doing everything. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yes. So, so finally, like, I get an email for an interview, and I'm just like, I, I read the email. Before I responded, I prayed on it. And then my mindset from then on was, I'm going to land this job. 
Like that was my mindset. Claiming, so, claiming. Yes, I was like, I'm going to get this job. Yes. I go to the I go to the interview, and um, I walk into the building. I'm sitting there waiting. I'm looking around, and I'm like, and and I'm like seeing myself walking that around, is, yes. yeah, interacting with people, with with coworkers, and everything like that. Like that's what I was seeing when I was there, waiting to be seen for the interview. So I'm like, all right, this is this is where I'm gonna work. Right. And my yo, I showed up. The, my interview was like at eleven in the morning. I was out there like at ten fifteen, right? Mm. And I was sick as a dog. Like I had a nasty like cold at the time. So I got there at like ten fifteen. I bought some tea from a little cart, yeah. and I went to a pharmacy and I bought some cough drops. And I was just like medicating for like thirty minutes outside the the building. <laughs> So that I don't cough while I'm in there. Right. And I get I get upstairs for the interview. They offer me water. Usually I never take water on interviews, but I was like, I'm gonna take some water because I don't want to be coughing while I'm talking to y'all. Mm. And then I leave the interview and they're like, Yo, we're not hiring that sick dude. Like, so I <laughs> I didn't want that to happen. So. Oh my god. Right. Um. So I do the interview. I I feel like it goes well. And here and here's like the crazy thing too. Like after I did the interview, um, I did the interview on a uh, I think it was a Thursday. Uh huh. That Saturday, and this is where, like, um, I know, you know, I do these Monday morning lives and stuff, and I'm talking uh -huh. about, like, different things. Yeah. Um, and one of the things I'm going to talk about is relationship building. So somebody, like, an artist manager that I knew, like, I always, like, kind of, like, was willing to help him out whatever he needed. I was always, like, willing to share my platform with his, the artist that he was managing at the time. Uh -huh. And so we got, we kind of got cool during that process. Right. Come to find out, this guy is like super connected. Like, At the spot, every like this guy is connected in a lot of like major spot places. Yeah. Like this man is connected, and so I'm on IG. I never look at people's stories. Like mm -hmm. I like I hardly look at people's stories, right? Until like recently. I'm going through the stories that Saturday after the interview. I see this dude at lunch with one of the people that interviewed me. So I was just like, oh my god! So I was just like, okay, I, I'm I'm taking this job. Like I like I'm not gonna let this opportunity pass by. I hit him up. I said, yo, you know, I saw you out to lunch with whatever, whatever. Put in a good word for me, and mm. he was like, yo, I got you. And then I got the second interview, and he was he was just kind of like throwing my name in there, like I guess the whole time, like right. from each interview I went on. And mind you, after the first interview, I didn't hear from them for like three months. Oh my god! Right, so I'm like, yo, I bombed. It was terrible. This guy's lying to me. Like he ain't tell nobody nothing. Like mm -hmm. right, then, right, of course. Yeah, and, and, and then finally, I, I get an email for the second interview, which got rescheduled like three times. So I'm like, yo, they playing around. Like, <laughs> yeah, what's going on, man? Trying to wear you out. Yo, seriously, I go on the second interview finally in like December, and then. I don't hear back again until January 2nd. Like, I went, I went to the second interview early December, and yeah. I don't hear back until January 2nd. So, yeah. like, that was, like, I kind of started the 2020 off with, like, the news of, like, I got the job. Yes. yes. So, like, I was, like, I was driving at the time. I had to pull over. <laughs> and, like, thank God. Wait. Like, I, I was, like, trying to stop myself from crying. I think a mm -hmm. couple of tears might have snuck out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because, like, you know, when you're working for something for so long, yeah. and then, you know, you, you have, like, what happens a lot of times is things that look like opportunities, mm -hmm. and then you, you kind of go all out for them, and then they turn out to be nothing. But, you know, this wasn't that. You know, that happened right. so many times, and, and I'm sure it's, it's, not gonna, it's not done happening to me, of course, but, like, this one was, like, a real, like, opportunity, and I was, like, so excited, and I was just like, yo, like, this... This 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 was like a, a turning point for me, and that was like another confirmation for me to be like, yo, I'm I'm doing the right thing here. Mm -hmm. And it, I like that you said that. Like you know, a lot of times what you said was something that was going to happen anyway because you claimed it. You know what I mean? You right. walked in there and you were like, this is this is my job. This is where yeah. I'm going to work. Not only am I saying it out my mouth, but I'm seeing it with my eyes that I'm there. You know what I mean? I feel like a lot of times. Even in doing this, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. in doing Cordy's Corner, that there is there's times where you're just like, damn, you know, like damn, like what's going on, you know? And, yeah. and you get you get disgruntled, you get upset because 
they're not the way that you want it. They're not going the way that you needed to. But at the end of the day, we look back and we go, okay, this is why it didn't happen then. It needed to happen this at this point in time. So that way I can see it for what it is. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So like the wait was long and you wouldn't throw a whole lot to get there. But then you got there and it's like, I like, I right, now I see. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now I see. But something you were telling me, I'm not sure if I mentioned this already. You went back to school. Yes. Yeah. In Go between that, there. in between like me at Radio for Brooklyn doing the show, um, I was like applying to places and I was just like, you know what? Like, I can't like say that I'm the perfect candidate for these positions when like they're looking and they're like, okay, where you got your degree in? Something that has nothing to do with this. So like, right. Right. How do we even know, like, you're legit? You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? I had to make that investment in myself to go back to school and get that communications degree. And so that's what I ended up doing. I, I, like, I had to go back to school. It was, um, it was, it was a little weird being, being back in school <laughs> after, like, being out of school for such a for long so time. For so many years, right? Yeah, but I feel like it was something I had to do. Like, I, I had to do it so that I can legitimize kind of, like, legitimize my hustle so to speak mm -hmm. um, and make myself like look like a legitimate candidate on like my resume right because like everything else that they were asking for everything else that radio stations are asking for for to for these entry-level positions or to get you through the door i had i had mm -hmm. they usually ask for like one year at least like six to months to a year of, of experience at a yep. station and i had three at that point Mm -hmm. So the only thing that was like stopping me, I felt like from was getting, not having the education. Right, was not having the education in that in that field in particular. Yeah. And so and you know what, going to school, like that was that was a game changer for me because mm -hmm. everything that I like I learned how to uh, like the, the setup that they had was the, the setup you see at Hot Ninety Seven, at Power, at Sirius, like that yeah. was the that was the equipment I got to learn on. I got to learn how, like I, I properly learned how to like edit audio, which is the biggest, like one of the biggest things yes. you're doing the most at, in, in radio, because mm -hmm. there's a, a bunch of interviews. You hear a, a finished product, but like you hear like a five minute clip on the radio, but that was like a 15 minute clip. And you, right. know, you have to learn how to cut that down. You have to learn how to make the decision on what's important content, what's not. And I learned all of that uh, in school. And I wouldn't have been able to, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been able, I don't think I would have been able to land that job without mm -hmm. that part of it. Like I had the actual hands-on work experience and, and, and being in the atmosphere of a radio station mm -hmm. and, yeah. and understanding how things can get crazy and things go up and down and things are constantly changing. But you know, the editing, I wasn't, I wasn't like that great with at that time. Right. And you know, some of the other stuff, the, the, the radio term terminology and stuff like that, right. I didn't, I didn't know. So going to school and then now, and I'm, I'm pretty, I'm almost like, I was a year out of school when I when I went on the interview for Sirius, so uh -huh. it was like, like I got to like I'm pretty much fresh. So like now I'm using the keyword the term, and the, term, right. the terminology that that they're looking for to know like, yes. all right, this guy was okay. This guy was at a, at a radio yes. station. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and I think it's also about doing your due diligence. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you have to. You know, especially now, like there's so many people trying to do what we do. You know? Yeah. And what what sets us apart you know what i'm saying understand what i'm saying like sometimes like that is always a big one because some people just want to get up one day and decide that they want to do a show and that's just not yeah. the case you know what i mean no um, it's, it's not it's, it's a lot about, that goes into it yes a whole lot a whole lot of that goes into making this great you know um you talk a lot about um getting no's 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 and you know people not calling you back and applying for so many things, what kept you going? Because for me, and this was from 2017 to the beginning of this year. To yeah. me, I would have been like, uh-uh, you know what, God? <laughs> you know what, Jesus? <laughs> this, ain't, this ain't for I, me. <laughs> I, it ain't me. It's, this, ain't, this ain't for me, Jesus. This, this ain't it. You know what I mean? So yeah. what motivated you to keep going, even after all those years? Um, I'm Honestly... When I'm set, when I made up my mind, I'm the type of person that I am. When I make up my mind to something, like I like nothing at all is gonna change that. So yeah. I made up my mind after losing that job I had that I was going to make it in radio. Like this is what I'm gonna do. I'm going mm -hmm. to do this. 
until I retire or die behind the microphone, whichever happens first. Right. Uh, <laughs> so that was my mindset. So, like, to me, it was either make it or, like, this is going to sound crazy. It was either I made it or I died trying. Like, there was no other option for me. Like, That's there, it. I was not. I was not trying to hear nothing from nobody. I was not trying to, like... Like I wasn't like I, I had my mind made up and right. and and being having that kind of mindset and, and I'm sure you've experienced this too, like having that kind of mindset sometimes makes people look at you like man this dude is delusional. Of course, the person is off. Like, <laughs> yep. yo, but I was just and another thing for me too when I talked about this like on the Monday morning lives that I do, it was the reason why I wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. I tell you know I I want to one day be a husband and a father right. right. I want to be a, a provider, but I, I want to be able to do it. I want to be able to be those things while doing something that I love mm -hmm. so that I'm not angry and miserable when I come home. And, right. you know, it, it, like if you're doing something that you're just doing to get by, you hate it, it's, that's draining. Like doing it something is. that you don't want to do is draining. It's emotionally yeah. draining, spiritually draining, it's physically draining. It takes a lot out of you. By the time you, you work at eight, nine, ten hours and go home, you've got nothing left. Now, if mm -hmm. you're a husband and you're a father, you have to have something for them. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have to, like, you know, your, your wife ain't seen you all day. You got to have some energy for her. Your kids want to jump on you and play. You got to have energy for that. And, and I felt like, you know, the, the way, the, the best way for me to be, like, that best version of a father and the best version of a husband that I want to be in the best version of a, of a provider that I want to be down the road in life is like, I need to be doing something that makes me happy. I need to be doing something that I have no problem waking up, getting out of bed. So it never, five it never morning, feels like work. Right. Know? Exactly. So now I'm happy. I'm happy if, and, and there's going to be some BS you got to deal with. You know what I'm saying? That's, right. that's every job everywhere that you have. Even if you love what you're doing, there's some BS you got to deal with. There's somebody who might try you, talk to you crazy. But it's easier to deal with that stuff if you love what you're doing. It's true. It's true. It's true. Because there's yeah. so much. There's so much you're gonna tolerate if you hate a job. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. Like the first, the first instinct. Oh, two weeks. Here we go. Yup. <laughs> exactly. It. Exactly. Yo, you. Uh, <laughs> so um, you've been at this job, and I'm guessing you you've gone through. Right now, we're all going through it. You had to work through COVID. Am I correct? Yeah, I'm still still just got off like an hour ago too. So how, first of all, how has that been? Because I can only imagine just in this entirety what we've been going through right now, having to get up every day and then report yeah. to a job. Um, how has that been for you? Um, it's It's been, you know what? The crazy thing is, like, obviously being at a station that big, you're seeing, like, for me, like, obviously musical artists is, like, the one of the biggest passions. So I'm, like, seeing artists that, I got on my phone, I'm listening to their music. Now I'm interacting with them. I'm working with them every day. I yeah. was there for about a month before this pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. Like literally, I started February 6th, March 6th. They handed me a laptop when I came into the office and they were like, yeah, um, we're going to shut it down because, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, so like the, the fun. Like, what the do you fun, mean? Right. I was like, I just got here. Like, what you mean? We shutting it down. Like, I got, I got to work from home. So. Like the really like the fun part of it, you know, interacting with with these um these big artists that you're fans of and getting to have a word or two with them, like that that that's like the the fun part of it, you know. Yeah. The other the other stuff, obviously, there's you know um, like busy work, so to speak. You gotta you gotta make sure everything's up and running properly. Make sure things are where they're supposed to be as far as programming and whatnot. Um, you know, so that's pretty much what it's been like for working yeah. from home for the past couple months. But like, man, I'm dying to. To get to be back. Able to, yeah, to get like I'm back. dying yeah. to, to get back in there and, and just be in the office atmosphere and just kind of like the energy in that building, like especially like on, on Fridays when everybody drops their album, like mm -hmm. seeing people walking around. And one of the last people I saw was 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 Tyra Banks. Like that's Jeez. one of the last celebrities I saw Tyra Ooh. Banks in person. And um, man. Mm -hmm. she, looked, she looked the same as when she was in Fresh Prince yelling at Will when they worked oh. at the Peacock, man. That's... Oh, my God. Oh <laughs> so like, my I, God. I'm, I'm around this, and then the pandemic hits, and it's, like, working from home now. And you know what? Like, 
like the fun part of it is gone, but I'm grateful because I still get to work. Um, I don't have to travel to do it. They, like I said, they gave us laptops. Um, so like I get to, if I start at nine, I roll up out of bed at 8.50, <laughs> you know, do what I got to do. Oh, then, that's the roll out of bed. <laughs> yeah, hey, man, if you was working from home, what would you do? You ain't going to wake up two hours before you start. The side yeah, the like, <laughs> if I got to jump on a Zoom call, I, you know, make myself uh, look right. Heard. I hear you. <laughs> but I, I would been, do the same thing. It's been great, though. Yeah, but but right. but honestly, it's it's been great, though, man, because, cause like, I, I see myself as, like, a ble- like, that was, to me, a blessing that came at the exact right time. Like, none of us knew a pandemic was going to hit. And everything, the world was going to stop and everything was going to shut down. But for me to have started, like, right on February 6th, and then, like, literally a month in, they're like, yo, it's a wrap. Like, we got to shut down everybody. that We can't have nobody here no more. And then, like, it's credit to, to the way the companies run. Like, they're, they're just, like, the first thing that they were, like, wanted to make sure was that everybody that worked there was okay um, and that we still, like, they weren't, letting anybody go or anything like that. And everybody was still able to kind of work and make money. Mm. Um, so like, I just consider myself blessed throughout That's this whole blessing. thing. Yes. Yeah. And like, I've, I've been like, and it's just, yeah, like I've considered myself blessed, man. And, and I just been like trying to be like a blessing to others and, and, yeah. and, you know, do whatever I can to help all people that's been affected by this because like, I know like I'm extremely blessed or lucky or whatever you believe in. Like, to be in this position and still be able to work and still be able to, to make money. Like literally nothing changed. My paycheck didn't change. My hours mm-hmm. didn't change. Like nothing changed at all, except the fact that I get to sleep a little man. extra hour. Look at right. God. Exactly. Like, man. Exactly. Um, somebody just asked, can we, Ma, yes. There's an arrow at the bottom of your screen. It should be. You can click that arrow and share with, you can share this live with as many people as you want. You guys can go in there and share the live. If you're liking this so far, can we get some fire emojis in this in these comments, please? Thank you guys for tuning in. Fire emojis, man. The fire emojis in these comments. That we know you guys are liking what was going on so far. Um, so just to get back into the conversation, you mentioned this, and I was waiting. I was waiting until later to do this, but I'll do it now. Um, you spoke about um, you spoke about the Monday morning um <laughs> live that you do, and yeah. I, one thing that I love about I loved about even your start was. Um, talking about your why and finding your why and finding your purpose and then coming up with these components that you're going to do every week. Talk about what inspired you and what made you want to do that because those are good. I watch every every Monday. Um, what inspired me to do that is because like I never want to be someone that like withholds information. And mm-hmm. again, you and I have experienced this. You hit up somebody like you see somebody doing like they're in the same field of you as you, and you're like, yo, this person's doing some fire work, like. You try to hit them up and get some help, some information, and yes. they're acting they're acting like you you know, trying to get the nuclear weapons secrets or something like that. Like <laughs> It's true. And it's, it's like oh, they, they, you know what I'm saying? Like they try to hold information. It's like, yo, there's enough room for all of us to to to, to, to win, man, for all of yep. us to eat. So like I my thinking with that was just like, okay, these are the things that like these are the, the, the mind this is the mindset I needed to have, these are the, the thought processes I needed to have, these are the things that I went through. And so I didn't want to withhold that from anybody because mm-hmm. I feel like there's a lot of people that you and I both know um, on, you know, on Facebook mm-hmm. and on these different platforms that they're an entrepreneur. They're trying to build up a business. They might be an artist. They're trying to get their music out there. They might be a visual artist and trying to get their work out there. And, you know, I just felt like the things that I went through, the things, the, the changes that I had to make, the thought processes that I had to to come up with could help somebody else, you know, that, and they always say like, yeah. share your story with people because you never know who it could help. So that's really mm-hmm. what it was for me. I was like, you know what? I, I feel like I have this, I have some information that, that could be helpful to anybody that's trying to build anything, yeah. to anybody that's trying to, to, um, to make it in their passion. And so I was just like, all right, let me, let me start mm-hmm. sharing with people. And so I decided to do it, like uh, do it on Monday mornings, you know, fresh start of the week. Yeah. You know, give people a little something to think about throughout their day, throughout their week, maybe learn this, learn something, and that's really what where it came from. Yeah. So, um, what I know, but I, I know these people don't know. What are some of the topics that you discuss each week? 
Uh, so the like the first I started with like finding your why, then you know obviously your why is what's gonna get you through the the really bad moments, the mm-hmm. moments where you feel like giving up. I talked about serving. Um, I like I said when we at the start of this, I was volunteering, I was jumping in, I was doing everything, uh, just to show my dedication, show that I was willing to learn, show my consistency, show my reliability, and all that stuff. Uh, I talked about, you know, I'm going to talk about relationship building. I'm going to talk about showing support. Um, entitlement. That's something that is, is mm. huge that I feel like we deal with. And I still sometimes deal with it. You yeah. Know? And, and like just stuff like that is, is, is kind of the topics that I'm going I'm to touch on and I have touched on um, so far. Uh, yeah. But, you know, I want to give it all away. You know what I'm saying? You got, you got. I mean, yeah. I mean, that means that you guys got to go on. Yeah. Follow my man on Facebook Live. He's here every Monday morning doing exactly. the thing. You know what I mean? Word, I hear you, bro. I'm not even. Thank you for what word. you did give. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, since we are discussing topics, there were some topics that I figured, why not just kind of get your opinion on some of them, right? Okay. So, um, we heard about the situation between Meg Thee Stallion and um okay. Tory Lanez, right? You know, yeah. at first it started off with she got you know, she got cut on glass glass on her feet. Turns out she was shot in her foot and now it's now it's being um, shown to, shown to light that it was Tory Lanez who allegedly right. shot her. Shot her, yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Um whew. like I, first of all, it was this was a one of the most bizarre like I mean, 2020 is already a bizarre year as far yeah. as headlines and stories go. Um, but this this just added to it. It, it was really bizarre. Uh, I was hoping the situation wasn't that Tory shot her because that would be, like, super abusive. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, why are you shooting someone that you're dating? Uh, and and my thought was, like, I honestly, I didn't know what to think. I was just like, <laughs> and, and, we still, and we still don't have the full details. Right, and I know. I didn't know what all. to think. I was just like, you know, I hope Tori didn't do it. I hope, you know, it wasn't a situation where they were trying to shoot each other and they were wrestling over the gun and it went off. Mm-hmm. Um, I hope that if he did do it, she stays away from him. Um, and the other thought I had was, oh, damn, Tory Lane's about to get deported. Because <laughs> he's Canadian. And, you know what I'm saying, you're getting truck. You know, if you get in trouble in another country, it just send you back to to yours. So we yeah. we might not be able to see Tory Lanez in concert if if he gets convicted or anything, because he was already on probation. I think it was he wasn't uh-huh. he wasn't even supposed to have a firearm. Oh my god! Uh, yeah, and another yeah. thing I thought was those damn Kardashians. <laughs> yes. So let's get into this a little bit. So like, I've, one thing I'm on this platform that I don't really talk about and discuss a whole lot is politics because. I'm setting my ways, and it is what it is for me. Um, but we, are, you, we already know that we're going through like a tumultuous, you know, uh, presidency. Uh, our yeah. U.S. right now is deemed as like a joke to other countries. But then, guess what happens? Our man Kanye West gets up and says, "You know what? I decided I want to run for president." He got out the bed, wiped the crust from his eyes, and was like, "I'm running." Just say, "I'm, I'm president <laughs> candidate." <That's> went, <laughs> went and did this conference, and in the middle of his conference, tells the people that Harriet Tubman really didn't do anything, that she didn't right. see any slaves, and that um, in the midst of being with Kim, he wanted to uh, he wanted to abort the baby that they originally had without her consent. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Um, my thoughts is, well, first, let me start with the, the Harriet Tubman thing, because I just had this thought the other day. Um, like, I don't doubt that she, you know, Free the slaves, like you know, what I'm saying that like she she brought people to, to I guess like um they went through the Underground Railroad, went yeah. up, got up north where where slavery was abolished and everything like that. Uh, but I had this thought just the other day. I was like, what did happen to a lot of those slaves? Like I know you wasn't just new black people walking around <laughs> in the northern <laughs> states, you know what I'm saying? And no, the agree. white people were just like, that. oh, there's no, and the white people were just like, no, there's no slavery up here. Let them live. Like no. Because they don't let us live now. It's 2020. So I know for a right. fact it was not letting them live back then. Um, and that, so that was one thought. Uh, another thought is Kanye needs some help, man. Kanye needs, like, and I don't know if he's not listening to anybody around him. I don't know if he, you know, no one's telling him anything. I don't know yeah. if, like, he feels isolated or, or whatever the case is. But 
he needs some help. Like he needs yeah. some like some serious help. Um, and like I obviously you and I are not in positions to help Kanye. All we can mm-hmm. do is say that he needs some help. But I, hopefully, like his his friends are seeing this and they're reaching out to him and asking him if there's anything that they could do. But also, like when dealing with like mental health. Um, and having a, a like dealing with a relative who is going through that, uh, I think Kim said something. She put out this long post on her stories, and she said something that that had a strong point because it's something that I've like personally experienced within like my um, like my church family is, is, mm-hmm. is you're powerless when when someone is like having their mental episodes and they they they're over eighteen. Like you're powerless. Like you could take them to get help. If they yeah. if they get up and say I don't need this no more, they could walk out. Because like so you're right. really powerless. So it really has to come down to a point of him looking within himself and saying, you know what, I need to get help. What like what I'm going through isn't right. I yeah. need to really sit down somewhere for a little while, get some therapy, deal, unpack whatever it is that I'm going through. If he has to get on medication and then do that, like whatever he needs to do. He needs to come to that realization on his own. There's not anything really anyone could do other than talk to him about it. I agree. Um, and the last one, um, and this was one that I still talk about to this day, my man Nick Cannon. So for oh. those of you who don't know, who have been under a rock, um, yeah. he went on a podcast last month and, you know, started kind of talking about, you know, the Jewish, um, the Jewish, I, I can't think of a word right now, but just how black people, were Jew- right. We were Jews. With, your, with the and original then, Jews. Right. right, we were the original Jews. And then, according to, you know, according to the media, when then on, and I won't, I won't relay on here, but use a lot of anti-Semitism against yeah. other Jews. And immediately was canceled, show got canceled. Yeah, man. Via I'm Congress. Talking. Bro, it was, it was immediate, bro. Like, immediate. <laughs> not even... Like, not even like ten hours. Not even eight hours. No, like they this. ain't even let the new episode air. I was, <laughs> I was, I was in front of my TV, had the TV on the channel for Wild and Out, and it just like I was watching Wild and Out with like old episodes because what uh-huh. they do is they play marathons all day. So I'm watching old episodes, and when eight o'clock comes for the new episode, Fresh Prince comes on. Now I love Fresh Prince, mm-hmm. but I was like, what the hell is this? Right. So, like. I go on Twitter because, you know, that's where I get my news. <laughs> I, I go on Twitter. I see Nick Cannon trending. And I see the video and I'm just like, oh, man. Yep. Like this, this is this is bad. You know, um, and I can't really speak on a lot of the stuff that he said because I'm not really like educated on that. Like, but, you know, we can the like we could we know like civilization started in Africa. That's right. So, you know, the first like the, the first Jewish people, he was right, we're black, but that doesn't mean like throughout years and throughout history and all that other stuff that, you know, it evolved and, you know, other groups became a part of the religion um, and stuff like that. So I, like, I, I was just, it was just sad because I know he's going to be okay. And he did apologize because he did say some things that were inaccurate. And I was one of the yeah. people, and you, you and I the, were, uh, were on different sides of this. Um, I was one of the people that thought that his apology was was okay. I thought that if you say something in, inaccurate that happens to a friend, a group of people, then there's nothing wrong with with, with um, apologizing. Yeah. Um, but I was just worried about like while and I was somewhere. It was like it was like a a um, it was like one of those opportunities. Like as you get to, you know, you follow like certain influencers on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And you're like, yo, this person's funny, and then you see them on while and out. Like that was like one of those yeah. like opportunities that he always had available for these yeah. influencers and for these IG comedians and for these people from like all over to have opportunity to, to get on TV and to have opportunity to, you know, just feed their families in a different way and come up with another stream of income. So like yeah. my thing was like, damn, Nick Cannon's a millionaire. We know that he's been in TV since we was kids. Like he, we mm-hmm. grew up watching this dude. So he's going to be good. But what about the people who might've been on for one season or two seasons? We know, like, you might, just because you're on TV don't mean them contracts, is, yeah. you know, that money is, is yeah. to a point where you could just not work again ever again in your life. So yeah. that's that's really what I was worried about. And I wanted to see um, Fatboy SSC on the show. I, he's he's mm-hmm. one of the people that I think is hilarious. And um, yeah. that was, he was supposed to be on a new episode, and they canceled it. Mm-hmm. So and we'll I think never that get to see it. Also, 
then goes back, and I mean, I won't, I won't really touch on this because that's a whole other conversation. But it just goes yeah. back to the, you know, the control. Our, our, you know, they would, they, they want to tell us in words how much power they believe that we have. When in mm -hmm. reality, they can take it away from us like that, or believe that they can. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I feel like that's in part what they did to Nick Cannon. And then you said you're right. We're on, we were on different sides of this, and me just kind of saying like, you know. If you say something, then say, I agree. If you feel like you're wrong and you want to apologize, apologize for maybe the harsh word you said, because he did say some harsh words. You know, he did. Yeah. We're not going to lie. <laughs> he did go in. So I would, apologize yeah. about, I would apologize for that. But if you believe that, listen, we are we were the first Jews, then stand on what you say. You know what I'm saying? And that was, for me, my only biggest issue. Like, don't then turn around after everybody who's rooting for you um, are here behind to support you and then go say, you know what, you're right, I'm sorry. I should never have said that. But I get, I got your point too. Like, listen, people got to eat. People got families, you know? So it's not yeah. just always oh, about me, you know what I mean? So I, I got that. Um, thank you, though. Thank you for your opinion on the topics. Um, yeah. If you have anything, any piece of advice you want to give to somebody that's watching right now that maybe wants to do what you do or are feeling type of low and kind of disgruntled, you know, because they may be kind of waiting for their shot. But what do you tell them? Yeah. Um, first, figure out your why. Why you want to do this? You mm. know what I'm saying? Like, if you don't have a, a purpose or motivation as to why you're doing something, then it's going to be easy to stop when it gets tough. Yeah. So figure out why, you, why you're doing it. Um, don't be afraid to get rejected. Don't be afraid to hit people up that you feel are in better positions than you. Uh, ask them for information. The worst that they could do is say no. Right. They happen, you know what I'm saying? It's happened to me a bunch of times, but I'm going to continue to ask. Um, I will say, like, anyone who is trying to do what I'm doing, Joe, hit me up. I'll gladly share everything that I learned, uh, everything that I did with with anyone. Like, the day uh, the day after, I, the, actually, the night I put um, that I got the job at Sirius, a bunch of people hit me up. Like, yo, how do you do it? I'm trying to and I laid out the blueprint. I said, yo, find somewhere to volunteer. Volunteer your butt off. Mm. And, you know what I'm saying? Take advantage of opportunities. Ask for opportunities. Like, just do everything you can. But yeah, I would say it starts with your why. It starts with why are you doing what it is that you're doing? Because when you feel like giving up, and you will feel like giving up. Like, that's what everything in life. You're going to feel like yep. giving up. There's none of these days where you're like, I don't want to get out of bed. I don't want to do this. I don't want to, like, why am I doing this? It's not paying me right now. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, but you just have to figure out why it is that you're doing what you're doing. That's really what I, what I go back to. Do I want to stop? Do I want to give up and start, you know, go back into, into tech and do something that I did not like to do just to say that, to, and, and wake up every day knowing that I gave up on something that I really, really believed in at, at one point. Mm -hmm. No, like, I don't want to do that. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I, I wouldn't right. be able to, to, to look at myself. Like, giving up, to me, giving up on something is, like, is, like, one of the worst things, like, like, I can't even, like, imagine myself. Like, if I didn't get this job, I'd have still been at it. I would yep. have still been, all right, this is not the opportunity. I thought it was. I'm going to still keep, keep going at it. Uh, yeah, like like Queen said, man, be persistent. That's what it is. You just gotta be persistent, be consistent, um, yep. and and really just when you gotta have something within yourself, and and that's what your why is, you know. Yeah, you know, yeah. one of the things <clears throat> before we head out of here that somebody that one of my mentors told me when I felt like giving up on Courtney's corn, I was like done, I was over it, and yeah. he said to me you don't have the right to give up. And I was like, what are you talking about? It's mine. Yeah, I can do whatever I want, right? Right, I can do what I want. What the hell are you talking about? He's like, you don't have the right to give up. There's so many people that are motivated, that are looking to you for inspiration, that yeah. lives that are that changing that you don't even know. You don't have the right to give up because somebody needs you. Somebody needs you to be a blessing to them. And from then yeah. on, I was just like, okay, <laughs> all right. Also, Courtney, you, you got like a team of, of, of 45 people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> if you gave up, you'd have to look at a room full of people like, hey, y'all, um, it's over. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all yeah. go back to what y'all was doing. And, yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, 
But yo, yo, congrats, man, on that Sherry Shepherd interview, man. That was thank that you. was huge, man. I was I was happy for real. Thank for you, real. thank you so much. Let me tell you like, when I say God is God is good, man. Yes. Um, and it's only the beginning. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, one day I'll be able to share the story about how this is all happening right now, but I can't yet. Um, but um, I, I'm thankful for the opportunity. Just like yeah. you, I've been told no. A million and one times. Like starting off at Courtney's Corner, I was telling people I started off with a great with a dirty gray backdrop in a nasty Pierce Space studio, just trying to live my dream. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And when I got there, it was nothing like I wanted. I even shared this story about then I, I got there one time to do the next six episodes and all my furniture that I paid for, everything was gone. All of it was gone. They robbed you. And you right, rock took all our stuff and happened oh to God. learn how to just deal with Man. that. But like you said, finding your why, yeah. finding your purpose and your passion for what you're doing um, will take you further than anything. You know what I mean? So I'm grateful to be here. That Sherry Shepard episode changed my life. Um, and if it anything, feels good. It, 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 thank you no, for pushing it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's what I was going to say. Like, And not that you needed someone like Sherry Shepard to come into your platform to validate mm -hmm. what you're doing because what you're doing is great. You're, you're another person like me, that's given a platform for people to come and share their stories and stuff like that. Like, you know, some of the interviews I've, I've had you done, like the way people spill their guts on your show sometimes, <laughs> like, I'm like, yo, this person's alive after going through that. Like, yeah. so like you didn't need to have her on the show to validate what she was doing, mm -hmm. but like it, it, it does give you like a sense of uh, a validation to be like, you know what? Like, I know I'm in the right path because yeah. If, if I was doing something wrong, if I wasn't, if I wasn't all there, if I wasn't all together, if I didn't have the years of experience and everything mm -hmm. like that that you have at this point, yeah, then man. someone that high profile would have looked at it and said, nah, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't messing with this. It's true. It's true. You no. Know? Yeah, it's true. Um, my man, it's been a pleasure. It's been a Yo, pleasure to finally back. sit down with you and put you on, man, and get you on the show. Um, for those of you who don't know, Ben was with us for our podcast. We did Uncensored. He hosted yeah. one of the episodes with me for season two. So I thank you for supporting me, supporting course, the brand, um, and just being here. It's been a, it's been a joy. Um, everybody, please go ahead and follow at Ben Lewis. It is it is definitely going to be worth it. Every Monday morning, he is on Facebook Live at Ben Lewis. If I'm correct. Yes. Um, and he's giving you the reason. I got my why. real name on there, man. I ain't hiding uh, from nobody. Uh, man, I didn't want to be like Benjamin, you know what I mean? So, um, <laughs> but uh, yes, please make sure you follow him. Add him on Facebook at Benjamin Lewis. Um, every morning, I'm telling you right now, you will be uplifted. You will you'll never be the same for that week. Um, thank you guys for watching. We're, we're here again next Wednesday at yes, 8 sir. p.m. one-on-one with Courtney Starks. I love you guys. Man, I love you to death, bro. Yeah, I love Have you too, night. brother. Appreciate you.